Hello. Hello, everyone. Good, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is uh, Chi Seng Lee speaking from Cybernet. So the talk, the topic of my talk today uh, is the following: addressing automotive functional safety in the context of ISO 26262. And then, uh, in particular, we'll introduce a, uh, a solution from ANSYS, which is called the uh, Madini Analyze, uh, which is a professional uh, safety analysis uh, software tools. Okay, this is the agenda of our talk today. Uh, first, uh, I'll give you a brief introduction of uh, the, the uh, what is the functional safety, uh, uh, what problems exactly is the functional safety trying to address, and then we'll also look at uh, how to achieve functional safety, uh, in particular in compliance with uh, uh, the uh, functional safety standard, uh, in particular for the automotive is the ISO 26262. And then uh, we'll move on to the main topic of our talk today, which is uh, the uh, safety analysis. I will elaborate on uh, what is a uh, safety analysis, and then what are the uh, importance or the roles uh, that the safety analysis play uh, in the context of ISO 26262. And then uh, in the final session of the talk, uh, I will give you an all, all, overall introduction uh, to the uh, ANSYS Modini Analyze and uh, we'll look at some uh, what uh, what can these uh, tools uh, help us, okay, in the effort to uh, implement the ISO 26262. And then, as usual, uh, we will uh, close the uh, uh, talk with a concluding remarks, and then we'll move on to the Q and A session. Okay, introduction. Um, so as the uh, uh, names imply, functional safety basically deals with uh, safety issues or uh, potential hazardous uh, situations that is caused okay, by the incorrect operations of systems or what we call, or we are having a malfunctioning behavior of systems. And uh, especially for systems that is driven by embedded software and uh, automated control. So as uh, we all know nowadays in various, in almost all industry, uh, there's more and more uh, so-called uh, automated embedded systems that, that is being used uh, in the uh, uh, daily operations. For instance, what you can see on your left side, we have the uh, automated robot, robotics in the factories. We have, of course, the modern uh, uh, airliners. We have the uh, rail, uh, trains or high-speed rail. And then of course, we have the uh, nuclear plant control systems. And all of these uh, applications or systems they have a uh, one in common which is if there's a malfunction happens in the systems and uh, the, the the consequences can be uh, safety related safety related first and then they may be catastrophic okay so if we move our focus okay we put our attention to the uh, automotive industry uh, and uh, as you know um, over the uh, for maybe 10 to 20 years ago Functional safety may not be uh, an important issue for uh, the automotive industry, but uh, I mean nowadays the modern cars uh, there's uh, more and more electronics inside the cars already. So uh, as, if you, uh, as you can see on your left or right hand side, in the modern cars, especially the high end cars, they may be more than 100 ECUs on board the the, the car. Uh, ECU means the uh, electronic control units. Uh, you can think of it as uh, small computers inside the uh, cars that uh, controls the specific functions of your car. For instance, they can make the body controllers, they control the, uh, the uh, windshield, uh, windshield wiper, and you control your air conditioning, and you control your uh, windows. But of course, there's a, a more safety critical system such as uh, the engine controller, the ABS, the airbag system, for instance, or even the electric uh, power steering control system is uh, potentially uh, safety related. So because there's more and more uh, this type of system that has been developed and installed on our daily cars nowadays, so functional safety has been, uh, uh, has becoming a very, very important uh, issues that uh, automotive uh, industry players need to take care of. Now, for various, uh, in various uh, industry they have the uh, different uh, functional safety standards okay, to help 
to help the industry to give guidelines and uh, uh, industry best practices, okay, to help uh, uh, help the company to deal with the functional safety side of the product. And uh, as you can see on your screen, uh, for instance, for the petrochemical uh, industry, we have the IEC uh, 61511, uh, 62061. And then, of course, for the uh, automotive, we have the ISO 26262. And then for the medical device, and then the railway, they have uh, each, they have the dedicated functional safety. And it's, it's interesting to note that uh, the IEC 61508, okay, is what we call the mother of all uh, functional safety standards because almost all of the uh, uh, standards that I mentioned just now is uh, derived or adapted from this IEC 61508, which is a uh, generic, okay, it is applicable to all uh, electrical, electronic, and programmable electronic uh, safety-related system. And then, of course, on the bottom side of the slide, you can see aerospace, aviation, and the nuclear, because of their uh, safety critical, is different. So uh, they, they, they go to the uh, different uh, standard genesis. And so we uh, focus, our, our focus uh, is on the automotive uh, standard, which is ISO 26262. And uh, just a quick uh, overview of this uh, standard. The full name is uh, Functional Safety Dash uh, Road Vehicles. And then it was first published uh, in uh, 2011, it's almost 10 years ago. And uh, the latest version is the second version, which is published uh, on the uh, India 2018. And as you can see on your right hand side, the latest version of ISO 26 consists of 12 parts in total. And then in each part, uh, each part or each chapter, if you will, uh, we have all sorts of uh, requirement statements. And then altogether, we have uh, more than 600 requirement statements. And then altogether, in total, we will have more than 100 work products. So you can think of work product as a uh, concrete uh, evidence that uh, you have uh, achieved or you have satisfied all the uh, relevant uh, requirements that is stated in the uh, in the standards, so it can uh, comes in the shape of uh, mostly it, it, it is uh, uh, it is reports, okay, it is documents, and but it is also it can be also in the shape of, for instance, the the software itself or the uh, uh, schematic drawing of your uh, is 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 it is a uh, basically engineering artifacts, okay. So about the scope, the scope of course it is uh, uh, the scope of the standard actually limited to the functional safety of uh, double E or the uh, electrical and electronic system installed on uh, road vehicles. And uh, one interesting fact, for the first uh, version, the uh, the scope is actually limited to uh, mass-produced uh, cars, okay, mass-produced uh, passenger vehicles. Okay, But uh, in the second version, they have expanded the scope to include um, commercial vehicles such as uh, buses, trucks, and uh, motorcycles. Uh, in particular, part 12, okay, if you can see on the screen, part 12 is actually uh, dedicated to the motorcycles. Okay, And then the, the standard is huge. Okay, It covers uh, a large ground. Okay, It covers uh, the, from design phases, the testing phase, the production, and also the management. That's the, therefore, the, the standard actually impacts everyone in the automotive industry, including the OEMs. Uh, by OEMs, we mean the uh, car makers and then all the uh, tier one, tier two, tier three suppliers. And then of course, it, it, it also impacts the uh, tool vendors, okay? Because uh, there's a, a chapter in part eight that is uh, 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 specific, specifically uh, say there's some requirements that you have on the tools that you use. Okay, so this is a quick uh, overview of uh, ISO 262 standards. And uh, when we talk about ISO 262, uh, ISO 262 define a, uh, there's a concept called uh, automotive safety integrity level, okay, which is short, in short is the ASIL. And uh, ASIL, there's a four, uh, four levels of ASIL, which is A, B, C, D, and D is the highest level. And most people think of ASIO as a as a uh, as a level of uh, uh, quality, and uh, by 
uh, but uh, actually it has some sense of quality inside, but essentially ASOS is a measure of risk and the corresponding risk of reduction that you have to do uh, for your product. So if, uh, uh, because uh, uh, when we talk about our product, when we install our product into a car, for instance, uh, we actually add uh, a risk uh, into the, the, the entire car. Uh, what type of risk? Because our product inevitably will have potential to fail okay, in any way. So the failure, okay, the, re the consequence of the failure okay, in your product, okay, propagating into the vehicle level, okay, uh, is the measure of risk. So let's say the product is SOD, meaning that you actually add a lot of risk, okay, a lot of risk into the vehicle. Uh, and since you, you've, had, you've added a lot of risk into the vehicle, that's why in the development, when you develop your product, you have to put in a lot of effort okay, in order to reduce that risk. So how do you reduce risk? Uh, we basically, we try to, uh, if possible, we eliminate all the uh, potential failure, failure or failure modes. And then if, if that is not possible, we try to put in uh, measures, safety measures in, in order to mitigate, okay? Uh, the the consequence of uh, a failure. Okay, so by A, so A means uh, the effort that you have to put in your product development is the least, and then the A, so D is the most effort. And then uh, on top of the A, B, C, D, in the process of uh, in the process of uh, defining the A, so of your product, you may end up with the result of uh, QM. By QM means that from the point of view of uh, ISO two six two. Uh, we believe that the risk that you add to the system is uh, uh, is is not uh, not not so serious. So you can use your existing quality management system uh, to develop your product. So just a quick uh, uh, give you a quick sense of uh, how much effort uh, additional effort is uh, needed. Okay, in order to uh, develop a uh, so-called ASIL okay, ready system. Okay, if you look at the maybe bottom side of the slide, I have a, a effort multiplier for ACL compliance. So let's say we have a QM system and the development effort is one. And, and developing a, an ACL A system, the effort can be 1.5 to three times uh, much more. And uh, ACL C can be 10 times much more effort that you need, okay, uh, considering the, uh, the functional system. As, as one. So, so it's a huge effort, okay, to produce, uh, uh, to develop, develop a product that is, uh, uh comply with, uh, ISO 262. And, uh, it is, uh, it is a challenging effort also. Okay. And then one of the most challenging, uh, thing to, uh, trying to achieve, uh, compliance with ISO 262 or we, uh, what we say achieve functional safety is that uh, ISO 262 standard does not specify exactly what type of uh, safety architecture or safety functionalities that you have you should have in your design. Okay, so meaning that what type of diagnostics, uh, what type of protection functions uh, to add, and then why do we add that, and then more importantly, how many how many diagnostics is enough, how many monitor, how many uh, protection functions is enough. So. Uh, ISO 262 does not really give you an ex exact uh, answer for this, okay? But what is essentially what uh, ISO 262 gives you is that it asks you, please provide proof that uh, your safety, uh, your system is safe or your development is safe. But uh, this raises another problem. So how do we prove? Because safe, unlike uh, other uh, technical uh, specification or technical requirement, Safe is a really abstract, uh, abstract thing. So how do you define safe? And it is unrealistic to prove via testing because you, it is very difficult to define a standard test. Uh, and uh, after you run through the standard test and then the result is passed, then I have achieved safety. So, so this is the challenge of uh, trying to implement uh, ISO 262 and then uh, in general trying to design a so-called safe uh, product. And, uh, the answer is, uh, actually quite simple. Okay. 
Uh, the answer is uh, through safety analysis. Okay, and this is the uh, uh, next topic of our talk uh, uh, today. So, what is uh, safety analysis? Uh, in general, in a general sense, okay, safety analysis is the activity that you do, okay, uh, proactively, okay, systematically, and meticulously, and then try and do all these uh, the following things first. We try to find out all kinds of ways my system could fail, okay, including maybe a hardware component fault, or it can be a software error, or it can be an installation uh, error, or it can be an a, a, a operation uh, fault. And then after that, we try to analyze and uh, identify, uh, try to find out what are the effects and consequences of uh, when uh, when when some of the uh, failure modes has happened, okay, because not all faults is a bad thing, okay, but uh, not all faults can lead to hazardous hazardous uh, situation. So we need to uh, find out what is the effect, and then if you can find the causes of this failure or causes of these failure modes, then in the design phase we can do something about it, and uh, either we can uh, change the architecture or we can add a lot of diagnostics, okay, diagnostic or protection functions in order to mitigate the, the possible uh, uh, severe uh, consequences. And then finally, we can also use uh, safety analysis as a tool to evaluate, okay, is my current design enough okay, to detect uh, and mitigate all possible failure causes and, uh, and mitigate those effects. And uh, so as you can imagine, this safety analysis needs to be done uh, during the uh, design phase because only this, uh, during the design phase you uh, should you uh, find any uh, weaknesses or potential catastrophe uh, failure modes, then you can do something about it. You can change the design. You know, there's still time to change the design. So uh, safety analysis is not a one one and off uh, activities. Okay? It has to be done throughout the uh, product design. Uh, actually, it's the product uh, design uh, stages. Okay, as you go through different uh, stages of the design, your details of the design uh, is uh, actually changes, and you have to do corresponding safety analysis. And then this uh, uh, process can be uh, iterated. So the key, okay, to achieve uh, ISO 262, or you try to design a safe or functionally safe uh, product, is the implementation of uh, safety analysis. Okay, so this is a general sense. So in uh, for the uh, 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 methodology of safety analysis, actually, if you look at the literature or you look, you look at the uh, uh, reliability engineering uh, domains, they have uh, all sorts of uh, safety analysis uh, methodology and uh, techniques. But uh, in the uh, automotive industry, there's actually two types of uh, safety analysis that is most commonly used. Okay, the first one is the uh, upper side, the FMEA, uh, the so-called uh, failure modes and effects analysis. Okay, which is uh, it looks like a, is basically a table. Okay, something looks like something a table. And then the second one is the FTA, uh, which means the uh, fault tree analysis. Okay, and uh, it looks like uh, there's a uh, there's a three types of, of uh, uh, visual uh, figure. Okay, uh, I will elab elaborate more. On the on this uh, safety analysis on the uh, next uh, few slides. So um, there's actually you can you can uh, there's two types of uh, safety analysis actually uh, they are called uh, qualitative and uh, quantitative. So for qualitative, uh, as as the name implies, uh, we can identify okay, what are the failure modes and their effects and their causes, but we do not uh, have the prediction. Of how often okay, the failure can uh, happen, okay, or the frequency of the failure, and the frequency of the failure we can uh, uh, find those uh, those information through quantitative safety analysis, and both qualitative and quantitative safety analysis are are important. Okay, as you can see on the slide, in general, okay, or any kind of failure, okay, any kind of failure. Can be uh, divided into two groups or two types of failure. 
the on the right hand side is the systematic failure. By systematic failure means that there's a, a deterministic cause or a certain uh, root cause that uh, that uh, cause or the reason that caused the failure to happen, and. Uh, uh, it can be a software failure, it can be a installation fault or installation failure, or it can be operational failure or a design related failure. So all these type of failures has a common that there's a, a really clear and precise uh, uh, root uh, reason for it to happen. So if you can find those uh, root cause, then in principle, we should be able to totally uh, eliminate uh, this type of failure. So. And uh, and and on the on on the on the other hand, we have the so-called run, random hardware failure. And this is related to uh, because we are talking about double E system uh, or electronic system. So electronic parts such as resistor, capacitor, or this semiconductor, due to the nature of the material of uh, electronic parts, they will have a random uh, hardware failure. So. For the systematic failure, we can use a qualitative analysis is enough, uh, provided that your analysis is uh, correct and uh, complete enough. Uh, we can find all the root causes and we can uh, get rid of the uh, uh, failure. But for random hardware failure, we cannot uh, totally eliminate the failure. So what we do is we try to suppress the failure rate, for instance, into a uh, acceptable acceptable uh, uh, value. And this is uh, can be done via the quantitative uh, safety analysis method. Okay. Now, uh, next, uh, I will go through, quickly go through three types of uh, safety analysis technique that is commonly used in the automotive uh, industry. First is the FMEA, okay. the full name is fa Failure Mode and Effect Analysis. And this is most uh, widely used techniques Okay, qualitative safety analysis techniques in all industry, not only automotive. And uh, it looks something like uh, the screen. Okay, it is basically a table, and then we have uh, columns that uh, uh, that depicts the uh, components that we are trying to analyze, and then we uh, try to uh, rec uh, we document all the uh, potential failure modes, the potential failure effect, and then the corresponding uh, failure causes, and then we examine. Uh, uh, the current design controls uh, in terms of prevention and detection, and then we will document uh, the, uh, the 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 failure uh, the failure failure of the potential failure or weaknesses of our design. And so this is the uh, FMEA. Uh, for the next one, FMEPA uh, with the additional D stands for uh, diagnostics. Okay, so this is uh, is uh, very similar to FMEA. But if you look at the uh, table okay, on your screen, uh, it has additional information of uh, failure rates, okay, failure rates, which is uh, uh, quantitative uh, uh, measures. And then, uh, in particular, for an ISO 262 part five, uh, in the hardware part, uh, they have defined a couple of uh, metrics okay, to be calculated. Uh, for instance, the single point of fault metric, SDFM. And the latent form metric LFM, and uh, these two metric can be uh, calculated by uh, implementing the uh, uh, FMEDA. Okay, and finally the uh, FTA, which is the, the fault tree analysis. And uh, in contrary with the uh, the, the previous two uh, FMEA FMEDA, which is what we call a bottom up approach. By bottom up approach, it means that uh, we start from the uh, lower low level uh, uh, components, okay, and then we try to analyze what happens after the low level uh, components uh, fail or fault, and then we gradually uh, move uh, move up the system and then try to uh, determine what is the effect on the vehicle level side, okay? meaning what is the passenger, the driver is experiencing, okay, but for fault tree analysis FTA, we reverse the process. Okay, we uh, this is what we call a top-down approach. So we start with a uh, uh, a so-called top-level event. 
Okay, and then for instance, the car has already uh, lost control. The car has already experienced an uh, unintended uh, accelerations, and then we we reverse the process and try to find out what is the uh, leading uh, events that is uh, the series of events that uh, leads to the, the the occurrence of the top level events, and then if there is a different branches. Okay, of the uh, propagation for propagation path, then we use the uh, either an OR gate or an AND gate, okay, an OR gate or an AND gate to uh, to link the the, the different uh, path of the fault propagation. So uh, when we uh, so the, the 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 link between uh, uh, the the events is uh, actually the uh, immediate cause effect relation. So by this, we can have a detailed uh, insight and understanding of how a uh, uh, final, final unintended uh, hazardous event uh, occurs. And uh, we can also have a really uh, detailed uh, understanding of the failure chains okay, that happens uh, the, uh, in the entire system. So and this is what fault tree analysis can uh, provide us. And fault tree analysis has both a qualitative and quantitative. So for qualitative, we don't do any calculations, but for quantitative, we can calculate the probability, okay, of the uh, occurrence of the top level event. And this is also another metric that is uh, required by the ISO 262 part five. So you need to calculate the probability of the occurrence of uh, your safety goal violations. Okay, so um, uh, we have uh, now. So now look at uh, let's look at the uh, uh, the roles uh, safety analysis play in the context of ISO 262. So this shows a summarized summary of the uh, the entire uh, uh, ISO 262 standards and. Uh, the, the entire standard actually, if you look at it, it is a uh, V-shape, uh, it is a V-shape cycle. It is a system engineering V-shape cycle. And what we have on the screen is that the, the red dots, and the red dots are the uh, area in the standard where uh, the ISO 262 standard explicitly requires uh, a safety analysis to be done. Okay, for instance, uh, uh, in the part three concept phase, and we are we are required to perform hara hara is a type of uh, uh analysis that we do to uh, define the aso level of our product and then we also need to uh, we can perform a fmea to identify the hazards and then we can also use fmea to help us to derive the so-called functional safety stand uh, concept and then uh in the uh, system development side, okay, after you have uh, established your technical safety concept, uh, we uh, we need to use uh, FMEA or FMTA to evaluate or assess our uh, system architecture for any potential potential failure uh, failure uh, causes. And then uh, if we go to the hardware part, and then this is uh, where most of the quantitative uh, safety analysis is uh, required and where we need to perform a FMEA and FTA on the hardware schematic first, and then we need to calculate the uh, hardware, uh, render hardware for metric, okay, as I mentioned earlier, the SBFM, the LFM, and the PM measure. The PM measure we can uh, calculate by the by using the FTA, and then the FM, uh, SBFM and LFM can be calculated by using the uh, FMETA. Then uh, on the software side, uh, we need to uh, perform an FMEA or FTA on the software architecture in order to confirm that uh, the software architecture is, uh, is is okay from the functional safety side. Okay. Now, okay. So as you can see uh, from the from the figure, uh, safety, uh, ISO 266 is actually uh, uh, they follow a system, a okay, system uh, concept. So by system concept meaning that uh, for automotive system, basically it is a, a system integration of uh, various parts or or subsystem. So as you can see on this slide, 
So we can break the break down the so-called the hybrid proposal system into various subsystems, including the inverter system, and then we can further break down to uh, the PCBs, okay, PCBs, and then the PCB will have uh, uh, lots of uh, hardware components on it. And uh, maybe I'm not showing in this slide, but we can also uh, after the system we uh, beside uh, beside be, uh, beside the hardware we also have the software part of the system. So since it is a uh, system uh, integration, so we can imagine that a fault happens uh, if a fault occurs on the uh, lower level, then the fault will uh, propagate okay through the systems and then. Uh, move on to the vehicle level. So, for instance, let's say I have a wrong data uh, prepared or wrong data, a wrong signal generated by CPU, and then uh, this will incur a, a wrong control output from the IC on the PCB level, and then on the uh, in the inverter system level we have a wrong actuator output, and then finally we have an unintended motor torque produced by the proposal system, and then finally from the passenger side. For the driver side, I will experience an uh, an unintended acceleration, and this is this can be potentially uh, hazardous because uh, uh, I can get into an accident and then I can get uh, injured or get killed. So uh, so this link or the chain of uh, failure and propagation from low level into the vehicle level uh, is what we try uh, the ISO 262 safety analysis try to accomplish. So you can imagine. On different level of the systems, we need to do perform uh, uh, quite a number of uh, safety analysis, and then the uh, result of the analysis needs to have a, a relation between different level of the systems. And this is one of the challenges in uh, performing safety analysis uh, for in compliance with uh, ISO 262. Okay. Okay, so now uh, let's move to the uh, the next topic, okay, which is the ANSYS Martini Analyze, and I will uh, give an overall introduction of this uh, this uh, software by ANSYS, and uh, we'll see how can it help us okay, to perform the various safety analysis uh, that is required in ISO 26262. Okay, just a quick summary. So basically, Martini Analyze is a so-called model-based a tool set uh, to support the uh, safety analysis. So the main, the fundamental, uh, fundamental functions of this uh, Modeni analysis is to perform safety analysis. And then, what is the relation between Modeni and uh, ISO 262? It is it is specifically tailored to uh, this standard. Okay, and uh, as you can see uh, on the uh, the figure on the lower side. Um, Medini can perform all sorts of safety analysis, and uh, uh, the safety analysis requirement in ISO 262 can be satisfied by uh, Medini Analyze alone. But of course, uh, ISO 262 has a lot of uh, other requirements and activities, for instance, the testing, the uh, management side, and those uh, types of requirements are not, uh, not being uh, satisfied by Medini Analyze, so there's an uh, overlap. Okay, between them, and of course, uh, similarly, uh, we uh, because for each different uh, standards, they have uh, their own uh, specificity, and then they have their own terminology, and maybe their flow is slightly different. So although they all is using the same safety uh, analysis methodology, but we need to have some sort of uh, customization for uh, each different uh, standard. For instance. But then it's also catered for uh, IEC 61058, the ISO uh, 21448, SOTIL, and then for the aviation industry, the ARP uh, uh, 475548. Uh, and then finally, there's a new feature on the automotive cybersecurity for the ISO 21434. We also have special templates and uh, customization to the uh, to the requirements of the of the standards. Okay, just a quick uh, overview of the history of Medini uh, Analyze. Uh, it is uh, it is uh, been around for a long time, and okay, since the 2006, okay, it has been used uh, 
gradually it has been uh, gaining uh, popularity and acceptance in the, uh, uh, especially uh, in particular in the automotive industry. Okay, and then by by the year 2016, okay, it is uh, acquired by uh, Ansys, and then Ansys now is trying to uh, expand the customer base, okay, into other industry, into including the the, the uh, automate, uh, the factory control industry, the rail industry, the aviation, aviation industry, and the medical industry. So, um, at the moment, we have uh, around uh, 200, we have more than uh, 250, uh, 250 customer base, okay, all around the world. And uh, for now, uh, most most of them are still in the automotive uh, industry. So most of the uh, car makers, the international car makers that you're familiar with. And uh, the tier one's uh, supplier, especially, and uh, are uh, are our customers currently. So okay, just uh, now uh, let me uh, give you a quick uh, quick go through of uh, what the Mandini analysts can do. Okay, I'll uh, skip this uh, page and we we'll go to the summary first. So uh, fundamentally, Mandini is the tools that uh, allows you to perform safety analysis. Okay, as you see in the slide. And this is the list of uh, all the safety analysis that we can do, okay, including HAZOP or the guide word analysis, the HARA, okay, or the hazard analysis and risk assessment, and then the FMEA, of course, and then the FMEDA, and then uh, both qualitative and quantitative FTAs can be, can be done. And then also we have a so-called cost effect net analysis. And uh, for information, uh, Madini is uh, one of the few uh, one of the few uh, software on the market that can uh, perform FMEDA and FTA together. In so uh, this uh, this slide uh, shows the uh, summary summary uh, summary of uh, what the uh, analysts can do. So basically, uh, we can do the, the list of uh, analysis analysis on the on on the screen, and then uh, on top of that, because uh, uh, we, uh, there's a there's a there's a link between the safety analysis and the design. Okay, so in Medina analysis, uh, analyze we we allow the user to uh, model your system design uh, by using the so-called SysML SysML model language. SysML stands for system model language, and uh, you can model your uh, system level architecture. You can also model your uh, hardware architecture, software architecture. Uh, down to the uh, IC architecture, and then on top of that, we can also uh, model your uh, requirement. Okay, because in ISO 262, safety requirements is uh, a very important uh, important part of the uh, standards. And then, more importantly, you need to have a link between the design and your analysis results. And uh, this is uh, what Dini Analyze is uh, uh, is capable of doing. Okay. So, uh, if we go back, if we go back to this, uh, this, uh, this uh, so-called uh, safety life cycle, and uh, as you can see, uh, uh, in the course of your product development, okay, going through the V V V cycle process, uh, at each stage, uh, we are required by ISO two six two to uh, perform some type of safety analysis. And at the end of the day, you'll find that uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, documents or results of certain analysis that you have on your hand. So this makes the uh, uh, management and the maintenance of all those uh, work products is uh, very difficult, especially the work product and work product between the work product, they, have, they need to have a, a traceability and consistency. So. Uh, for instance, if uh, different work product you use uh, different tools to uh, perform, and then you end up with uh, different separate sep uh, documentation, then you will uh, you will basically end up with this. You will end up with uh, many separate documents, and uh, meaning that you have no consistency, you have no uh, traceability, efficiency, and then it's a nightmare to maintain. So what Mazini and I are trying to solve is that we try to move your information from a document-centric okay, way into a so-called model-centric way. So uh, model-centric means that all of the information I have okay, uh, on the design, on the analysis, on the uh, requirements, 
are stored inside uh, inside individual models. And then between models and models, we can easily uh, build or establish link between them. And uh, this makes the traceability and consistency is automate, automatically maintained by the software. Okay. Here's another uh, depiction of the uh, the concept okay, of model based. So first, we built uh, uh, the the SysML models of uh, the the system that we wanted to analyze or we need to analyze, and then uh, we will uh, automatically generate. Uh, for instance, uh, if you need to generate a Hara, okay, uh, Hazob, uh, or FMEDA or FMEA, then we can uh, easily uh, generate those worksheet, okay, and uh, the result will be linked, okay, with the system models, okay, by the by the by the by the tools, okay. And then I uh, quickly go through uh, because actually Madini analysts can do a lot of uh, quite a lot of things. Uh, I'll quickly go through uh, the uh, key, uh, the the more uh, the the important uh, important work work product that you can uh, produce or generate by using Madini. So the first one is the so-called item definitions. So if you are familiar with ISO 262 part three, okay, you are required to uh, so-called define your item of development, and uh, we can use uh, the modeling uh, capability of Modini to do this. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we can use the system uh, modern language. Okay, and th because this is a universal system design language, so if, uh, if we can uh, import uh, your model, if you are using different uh, 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 so-called uh, SysML tools, for instance, IBM uh, Rhapsody or the Nomadic, uh, and then the, the, uh, the so-called uh, EA Enterprise Architecture, and then we can import your models from those uh, software. And then uh, Madini is uh, filled with, uh, we have a rich uh, collection of uh, templates that you can use, right? uh, for instance, these uh, guide word analysis templates. They give you a, you can use the uh, built-in templates and then uh, uh, perform your analysis uh, right away. And then, of course, we also have the templates for Hara, yeah, that has analysis and risk assessment. And then, uh, for the safety requirements, we can also uh, uh, model your uh, safety uh, requirements because in ISO 262, the safety requirements need to have a, a hierarchical structure. Uh, we start from uh, so-called safety goals uh, down to functional safety requirement, technical safety requirement, software safety requirement, and hardware safety requirement. So we can model all those uh, inside Mardini, and then we can also have the relation uh, between them uh, intact, and uh, the traceability can be guaranteed. And then also we can allocate uh, these uh, requirements into onto the system uh, uh, system elements to ensure that all of the requirements uh, is uh, will be taken taken care of. And uh, if you can see on the uh, right right hand side, there's a traceability matrix that shows the allocation between uh, safety requirements and the corresponding safety uh, system elements. And then of course uh, if uh, because uh, you can show or if you document your uh, system design evolutions in the Medini, then you can see the changes uh, of your system. The detail of your system can be uh, is changed okay, throughout the, uh, the the process. And then, of course, uh, we can uh, perform a so-called model-based uh, FMEAs where all of the results and the, the entries of the, the worksheet are actually uh, reusable models, okay, and then we can also uh, visualize the the so-called failure chain, okay, the link between different uh, cause and effect uh, of uh, of failure modes uh, inside uh, by using a visual uh, visual uh, visual visual figure. And then for the FMEDA, this is the uh, one of the uh, main feature of uh, Madini. Where we have built in the uh, we embed the uh, failure uh, failure failure rate handbook. Okay, I think I missed a failure rate failure rate handbook. Okay, including SN two nine five zero the military handbook, the IC two zero three zero, and then and all the others. And then you can easily uh, uh, define or estimate 
the uh, failure rates of your hardware components okay, by by using the built-in uh, failure rate handle, and then you can perform the FMEDAs uh, on it. And then uh, again, and there's a fault. Okay, we can uh, post analysis. The sound. No. Um, I think there's uh, some. Uh, do, do you still hear me? No. Hello, hello. Oh, I think the. Uh, I'm not sure is the. Maybe it's the internet connection. Okay. Uh, I hope you can hear me now. Okay, we are on the. Okay, we're on the end of our talk already. Okay. Um, so uh, okay, I was I was talking about the uh, FTA. Okay, FTA fault tree analysis. Uh, we can uh, uh, we can uh, perform fault tree analysis in uh, uh, Madini. And uh, the fault tree, the result or the uh, the elements of your fault tree analysis can be linked uh, with the uh, results of your uh, FMEDAs. And uh, this this is also required by S two six two and uh, traceability okay, is uh, one of the main uh, main uh, main value of uh, the, what Madini can 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 provide. Okay, so it looks uh, it looks uh, the the actual software looks something like this. Okay, so as you can imagine. Uh, I think this is a good tool for safety manager, especially because uh, you can uh, easily uh, manage all those uh, work product, okay, all the all the uh, all the safety analysis results, and then uh, inside one uh, environment and in particular one project file, and then all of the linked uh, or the traceability between each work product and each, uh, for instance, each failure mode, each system elements uh, can be maintained uh, inside the, uh, the the software. Okay. Okay, I think uh, we're, uh, time is also almost up. So uh, let's uh, wrap up our talk with uh, some concluding remarks. Okay, first of all, I hope uh, what you take away Okay, from this uh, talk is that the key to achieve functional safety, or if you're trying to achieve uh, compliance with the ISO 262, okay, for your automotive product design, is the implementation of safety analysis. So if you want to uh, say uh, get the certification of ISO 262, uh, then you have to do uh, safety analysis, and uh, depending on your uh, ISO level. Okay, either whether it is a low uh, A, B, or high level of C or D, then you uh, may need to do both uh, quantitative and qualitative uh, safety analysis. And uh, as I said, the, the, the second point, both qualitative and quantitative safety analysis are important uh, because they give you uh, different uh, results and informations okay, uh, at different stages of your, uh, of your design. And then, uh, in the automotive industry in particular, the typical safety analysis or techniques that are used is uh, FMEA, FMEDA, and FTA. Okay. And then finally, finally, uh, ANSYS okay, provides a solution called uh, Madini Analyze, and uh, it is basically an integrated model-based solution uh, for uh, the implementation of some safety analysis uh, within ISO 262 framework uh, and uh, cover the entire product uh, safety life cycle. Okay. Uh, in other words, uh, everything, uh, uh, all the analysis, uh, safety analysis that you need to do uh, inside ISO 262 or is required by ISO 262, you can okay, do it in Madini. Uh, alone. So you only need one tool for all the safety analysis. So uh, so that's it.